everyone so I wanted to share with you card number three in this series um, so you if you've seen my other two videos I made these two cards and what I'd like to do now is make a third using the scraps um, and supplies that you see in front of you here so again I've started with a um, standard card base and instead of it distressing um, or using vintage photo distressing to um, ink the edges this time I'm actually going to use the uh, cornflower blue um, in the archival and I'm just going to run that along the edges so to give it a much sort of sharper look to the distress ink um, and you could go ahead with the uh, like a sponge and do a similar technique um, that you would have seen me do before but this time I think I'm just going to give it a little bit more definition on the edges and you can go in as far as you like um, and it'll be a bit darker as well so I'm going to start by doing that and then I really like this piece here so I'm just going to trim a little bit off the edge and I will use my trimmer just so I get a nice straight line I'm not measuring I'm just sort of taking a rough idea of how much I want to come off that edge and that looks about right for me so I'm going to go ahead and do the same inking te technique along the edges of that piece of paper as well so originally I was thinking I might get four cards out of this could be pushing my luck I think to try and get four but we'll see how we go we'll see what I end up with at the end of this video okay so I'm going to put that there and I need to have something down the side here so I'm going to go back to that bird stamp that I had earlier and I'm going to run that down the side we'll use the same um, ink that corn cloud blue and this time instead of doing that uh, shadow or double stamping sort of technique I'm going to actually stamp straight onto the card so it gives a little bit more colour to that stamp so it's going to be quite a strong colour and you can see it's come out quite dark there compared to when I did that shadow stamping before. Okay so we will adhere this down just using our double sided tape and I have no idea how this is uh, going to go beyond these two elements of the card but it's sort of you know one of those things I like to challenge myself every now and then and use up some old um, bits and pieces of things and they don't always turn out perfectly but you know it's um it's a nice way to use up leftovers and not look, let anything go to waste okay so we've got that there and then what I think we might do I do need a sentiment and I'm wondering if one of those stamps will fit right there. It's going to be a tight squeeze, isn't it? Regardless of which one I, I use. Unless we were to stamp it onto... We might go straight onto this piece here. And then potentially we could put our flower on the other side. So we'll go with that. And I'm just choosing this sentiment based on which one I think will fit in the space that I have. So we've chosen thank you. And stamp that there like so. That fits perfectly. Um, and then I think we will go ahead and do this flower. So... Um, one of the things I did off camera was to, just to go around and be a little bit more fussy about the way that I cut it and I actually went in and out of each of those little um, petals there and then what I've gone and done is in the big petals I've just folded them up all the way around so just getting my fingernail in the middle of the petal and folding like so and then with the sort of littler petals I've just curled them back so using my fingernail I just curl that piece back and that gives a little bit of dimension. Now I've done two of those and you could layer them up or you could layer it onto a flat flower and give a little bit more dimension and I think that's what I'm going to do. To adhere that you could use double sided tape and that would work perfectly fine um, but what I find is with these things with a little bit more dimension sometimes it's better to use a wet glue that will um, dry quite firm. So I'm thinking hmm, 
So I think I'm going to adhere it down here. And what I'm going to do is adhere this one using the flat one, using the um, double-sided tape. And then, because this already has dimension of its own, I don't really need to use the uh, magic mount, but I think I'll use some glossy accent. But as I said, you could use the, the um, double-sided tape. That would be absolutely fine. Okay, just need to unblock this. It does get blocked up quite a bit. And I'm just going to put the tiniest amount of glossy accent. It's almost out, so that's why it's taking a while to come out of the bottle. Into the middle, and I try and match it up so that the flower is not lining up with the flower underneath. So wherever there's the little petal, there's a bigger petal and vice versa. I'm going to go back to my pearls. And because this is one single flower, I'm going to go with a big pearl this time. And just grab my tweezers. Sometimes those sticky bits underneath get left behind need to make sure you pick those up otherwise it won't stick you could use your glossy accent to stick it down as well okay so I'm just wondering if I need some kind of border along here or not don't think I do you know no I think I'm just gonna go plain and simple with that design okay and what I'll do is, seeing as that was such a quick one, I will try and get one more squeezed in. So I do need to grab another piece of cardstock because I used the three that I originally pulled out. And these just come in a pack of 100, so you can um, use loads and loads of them. So again, just folding my card. Just trying to think if I want to do something a bit different this time. No, I think I'll go with that one. I was going to do a gate folded card, which is where you fold the two sides into the middle. But no, we'll go with this. Okay. Now, I've still got this camera and a couple of these pieces. And what I thought I might do with this camera is actually staple it to the, um, the piece. So I've got my mini stapler here. You could use any office stapler. And I'm just going to staple it there like so which kind of fits in with that design that was already there. So I know I want to use that piece. Um, the other thing I want to do is try and use up this piece here. And I've got my circle punch, which I haven't used yet. And what I'm going to do is punch some circles, but I won't get full circles out of this, but that's okay. Because what I'm actually going to do is get part circles and then I'm going to line them up to create a scalloped border. Sometimes it's easier to just open it up. A, so you can see what you're doing, and B, so they come straight out like that. So I'll get as many as I can out of this, which is the four. Okay, and so they're going to create a little scalloped border across a piece for me. Haven't decided what piece yet, because I'm running out of options here. But I do have a few little bits left. So this one here, I'm not going to be able to make anything with, I don't think, because I think it'll look silly to have two of these pieces. So I do have a little bowl that sits on my desk that I just throw things like this that I don't want to actually throw out um, into the bowl and I come back and use them at a later date. So I'll get rid of that knowing I don't want to use it. Now these pieces here have got me a little bit stumped. I'm not quite sure what to do with those pieces. And I'm thinking the only real viable piece left is this one here. I don't like that pattern so I'm definitely going to have to go this way um, and I think I'm going to ink the edges of this with the vintage foam. So just tapping along there and while I'm doing that I think I might also ink the edge of the actual card base. inking all the way around the edge and a little bit of ink goes a long way okay now the question is where do we want to go with this so I think I'm going to do the same technique I did before with the, the dimensional flower and then we're going to add these pieces under here to create that scalloped border. So I'm going to run one piece of double sided tape along the top. 
just going to sit that back down there. We're going to go off to one side and then this one will come here. I'm thinking it's missing something. Let's have a look at this as an option. I think it doesn't fit well with the camera. So I'm going to say no to that option. go to the other side. So what I'm going to do is trim this down. Okay, and I think I'm going to go ahead and staple this the other side as well. Two, two staples. It's a very old stapler so it doesn't always staple the way I want it to. The staple went through the paper and then it didn't actually fold it on the other side. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that myself. Okay and I think just a little bit of dimension behind that banner. It lifts it up the page a little bit. And there we go. Alright. So we'll go back to the original side and we're going to adhere this down. Okay, now with these ones here, I'm just going to flip them over. I wonder actually whether. No, it's too similar. I was thinking maybe I could alternate them, but uh, let's not do that. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit of double-sided tape across the back of each of those. Now this one will look a bit sparse because the supplies are dwindling very quickly. And whatever I've got left over at the end will literally just go in the bin. So I've done the best I can at using up all the rest of the supplies. And I think any scraps that are left over from this paper probably not worth saving at this point. So let's start at one end and we'll move it in just a little bit and the trick is getting these as even as possible so it actually looks more like a scalloped border than circles that we've punched out. So one of the ways, well here's a use for this little piece of paper here, one of the ways we can do that is just by running that piece of paper along and I know I've got to just inch that in a little bit further. Okay. And let's not stick this down until we get the other one in the right spot so I kind of push it down. over just a little bit and that one over just a little bit and then we can really give it a firm push down. Okay. So I've got this one here but this background is looking very plain and so I really need to do something to jazz it up a little bit. Um, I've still got these stamps that I could use. I'm just wondering how I'm going to use them. Um, I could add the flower down the bottom. I still find, think this is looking a bit plain. I don't think the bird fits in with this one, so I think I'm going to have to go with that one. Um, the script across the bottom. But we don't have a sentiment yet either. Just wondering whether we include best wishes up the top here. I think we might go with that and then if it still looks a bit plain we can add the um, that script. It almost looks a bit like a, an envelope postmark sort of thing. So that is a bit crooked so we want to straighten it so that I know when I stamp it down it'll be straight. Best wishes. 
We'll adhere the flower the same way we did before and um, let's have a quick look though. Are we happy with that? I still think it needs that shadow stamp. So we'll get our scrap piece of paper. Actually I think in the, in the vintage photo it might be a better for this one. So I'm going to stamp most of that ink off and then we will add this. There we go. And then here this one down before we put that last flower on top. Now because it's got the staples I'm going to go one on either side just to make sure that it does stick around those staples. ink on the edge of this piece because we've inked all the other edges just to help it look like it all belongs together and as far as up off that other sheet as we can get it like so double sided tape on the back of that flower glossy accents jammed up again. It doesn't take very long to dry so as soon as you let it sit there for a moment it does dry. And you'll notice last time I put it on the flower on the card and this time I'm putting it on the actual flower that I'm about to stick down. It doesn't make a difference. So line it up so that they're varying so you can see the layers of flowers and because there's a lot going on in this one I'm thinking the big one's going to be too big and I might actually just go with a little pearl in the middle. I can find my scissors. No, my tweezers is what I'm looking for. And oh, there they are, in amongst the mess. Oh. Just a pearl in the middle there. I probably should have inked the flower because everything else is inked. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. Considering I was using up scrap bits of paper that most people would probably throw away anyway. I've managed to get myself four cards out of this, um, these scraps and look they're not you know anything spectacular um, but they're definitely not too bad either so I hope you enjoyed this video and, uh, and the other videos that went with this thanks for watching thumbs up if you like the video or subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more um, card making and scrapbooking thanks again for watching